I want to get right into it and remember the legend. The legendary Georgetown coach, that is, John Thompson, who led the Hoyas basketball team for 27 seasons, has passed away. Thompson amassed a coaching record of 596 and 239. Listen to this. 97% of his players stayed all four years and left with a college degree. He was the first black head coach to win the NCAA National Championship, a three-time Big East Coach of the Year, Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame inductee. Thompson retired from coaching in 99. During his tenure at Georgetown, he coached several NBA first-round picks. Alonzo Mourning, Patrick Ewing, Bill Martin, Allen Iverson, and Sleepy Floyd, just to name a few. Michael, I want to start with you. I know you are a friend of John Thompson, and I am so sorry for your loss, and I appreciate you joining us this morning. But if you could just put into perspective his life and, and, and what he meant to you. Well, Molly, um, I, I covered Georgetown basketball the year Patrick Ewing was being recruited by John Thompson. So that goes a long way back. That's that's 40 years ago. And I was 21 years old and had no idea what I was in for uh, getting to to be around, to cover, later to get to know. You mentioned friend. I, I, I feel that, you know, other than my father um, and maybe two uncles, a couple of uncles, Big John was as impactful on my life as an adult man as, as anyone. Other, other than that, other than my dad and a couple of uncles. And um, as, as Stephen A. knows and can speak to and will speak to, he didn't coach either one of us. I didn't play college basketball. And yet he was everywhere in my own life in, in terms of what I believe about education, uh, about sports, about basketball. And I don't mean X's and O's. I, I, I mean sort of the day-to-day execution of what these things mean to our culture. Um, and it's, it's hard to even know for me, you know, where to begin. Um, I mean, John was the most complex, fascinating, brilliant person I've covered, courageous, and probably I could apply all those things to anyone I've ever known. And there were so many mornings where I, I learned after a long time that right John Stephen didn't a? care... John didn't care necessarily as much about talking about the day-to-day -day issues of basketball and matchups and who was playing and who was an All-American, who was better than whom. But all the big issues, all the great, big, fat, juicy issues, controversial that were confronting us, he was always available to talk about them. He was always available to share himself, what he felt about those things, how they would impact students, his students, his players, the rest of us, the rest of the world. Um, and... It's the world is not going to be as interesting a place without John Thompson. Well, Michael, you and Stephen A. can talk from much more personal experience. I can just tell you, and I don't know how much value it is to add because you can get this everywhere. You know, in the heyday in my lifetime of college basketball, when the Big East was like as good as the pros, it felt like you were as excited about that as anything. John Thompson and, and Georgetown were the powerhouse. If you had to pick one, especially during Patrick Ewing's time, where you thought, boy, that's the team to beat, seemed to me to be Georgetown. And um, I, had a, I had a personal, and, and that's just like, so he was a great coach from the kind of salad days of college basketball for people in my generation. And as a trailblazer and as a first as an african-american coach winning a national title all those things you know that's that's well documented what that meant to people and you and stephen a could speak to that better than i can um what i could tell you is an experience i had with him at the uh mcdonald's all-american game michael you may have been there um, you may have, I may have even gone with you. I don't remember because this is back in the around the horn days and it was LeBron James last amateur game. In fact, his team lost that game. And I run into John Thompson back, you know, behind the scenes, like in the press area. And he's sitting there and he had a commanding presence, you know, and I always got the feeling like he knew it and he liked to use it. Uh, voice and size and everything. And, but, you know, of course, like I go up to him, it's John Thompson. I want to talk to him. And we're talking about LeBron James and the contract 
that he just got from Nike. I think it was like a $100 million contract. I don't remember exactly. And hit the first thing he said is, if LeBron's getting 100, Kobe is going to need 200. So we started talking about it. And it was basically his point of view. Whatever your potential was, uh, one guy had already done it. And that's the guy who should be rewarded. The guy who already did it. And uh, it's, a, it's a moment that has stayed with me. I remember that interaction. I didn't have a lot with him. Um, but I remembered that one. And it made an impression upon me that the kind of values he had told him whatever we think LeBron's going to be. And he turned out to be all of it and more. Kobe, who'd already done it, he's the guy now that, that Nike's going to have to, he felt like double whatever they gave LeBron. And, and so whatever people can take away from that, go ahead, Michael. I, I don't presume to talk about him with that kind of personal uh, feeling that you do. But I'm sad because it was a great coach and a figure from my, really, my childhood um, that, that loomed larger than life in my imagination, and now he's gone.